And it's my belief, and it's been my experience, that if you're not leaping into innovation, if you're not thinking sideways, then what you're really doing is settling for mediocre. You're accepting business as usual. If we start knowing what our innovation quotient edge is, we can all go there. Now the innovation quotient edge, I call it the IQE for short, tells you your, your unique style and strength of innovation so that you can train your brain to be innovative on demand, so that you can easily go to the gym of innovation and practice. Now I'm not saying it's always easy, but I'm saying you want to start with your strengths. Now, hundreds of you in this room actually took it, so I know a little bit something about the people in this room, and we're gonna go over that in a second. Go. we have is we tend to treat innovation like a point in time exercise. So we go to the movies and we suspend belief. We listen to me for an hour and we suspend belief. We're like, yeah, we can be innovative for this moment. But innovation isn't a point in time exercise. It's a way of thinking, a way of doing, and a way of acting. That's how you stay competitive in this marketplace. For the past 20 years, Tamara has been advising companies like Rico, Otterbox, and Johnsonville Sausage on fostering innovative ideas and people. So, the first thing you're ranked on is the scale of innovation. So you're either an agent, a champion, or a maverick. And all of them are important to innovation. So if you're a maverick, you're kind of that wild-eyed idea person. You're always the force through the trees. You're always kind of 10 steps ahead. If you're a champion, you're kind of that Sherpa of innovation. You do moments of innovation all the time and you foster it and you see it in others. And if you're an agent of innovation, you're the doer of innovation. You're the one who's over there innovating on the back end because it's all about how do we implement, how do we practice, how do we do. And all of them need to be in existence for a great organization to thrive. Cool, you know what I love about this very quickly is you guys are all smiling. There are people in the audience like, whoa! <laughs> There are hot spots of innovation going on all or over your organization. And it's our job as conductors of innovation to see them. Oh, look at them, and to foster. I don't even have to tell them what to do. All right, here, take another one, do it, here. Do it, okay, do it again. Now what happens if you hold hands? Can you guys see it? It's awesome, give them a round of applause for coming up. Her keynotes come from a real world in the business trenches perspective. Today, we got together at Symposium 2014 to think sideways. So we stretched the limits of possibilities. We thought differently. We thought about the innovation attitude, how to practice, how to connect with others, and how to shift the game so that we can have the competitive edge. A colleague of mine, Ed Goodman, was called up to do what I think is the most awesome thing in the world. He was called up to be an Imagineer for Disney. And he and seven other guys were brought together with one simple task, reimagine the Disney parade. So no pressure there, right? Not like it's something iconic for Disney or anything. <laughs> so they put these guys together in this great room where all the walls are whiteboards that you can scribble and draw on, and they get together. Day one comes, day one goes, and they got nothing. So day two, they come back together. The only thing that's changed is now they got piled up pizza boxes and stale coffee in the room. The walls are blank. Now these guys are starting to really get worried. So day three, they come back together, and this time, they bring in a little girl, an eight-year-old girl, hoping that she'll you know, give them some amazing wisdom as to what she loves about parades, or give them the answer of what it should look like. And about four hours into it, the little girl looks up, and these guys all look at her like, yes, little girl, what is the answer? What is it that we should do? Um, why do parades have to be on the ground? Oh my God, you've never seen agro men run so fast to the whiteboard and they're scribbling and they're drawing and they reimagine the Disney parade in the sky. Do you see what happened there? She didn't have the answer. She just had a question, just one question. Innovation is actually in the questions, not the answers. Tamara is the author of two nationally published books including Think Sideways, a game-changing playbook for disruptive thinking. She has been featured on the Today Show, the New York Times, 
and news and radio programs across the country. Here's the thing. I actually don't remember any of it. I don't remember him attaching those worn straps to my ankles. I don't remember him attaching the, the ropes to the bridge. I came to as I was being hoisted up onto the railing with nothing to hold on to. I'm looking over that ledge, at that deep ravine, and he looks at me and he goes, okay, Tamara, on the count of three, you're gonna jump up and away from the bridge. My legs are shaking so hard I can see them. My heart is pounding so fast you can see it through my shirt. And then he starts counting. One, two, and I jumped! I couldn't wait! one more second. If I had waited one more second, I would have jumped back down to the safety of the bridge. And as I was being hoisted up that day, I promised myself I would never forget that one second. It takes one second for a dream to die. It takes one second for us to brush a great idea under the rug. It takes one second for us to talk ourselves out of doing the very thing we know we should and want to do. Have you ever been on that ledge of decision-making? You get up to it, you've got this idea percolating, it's a little risky, it's kind of innovative. Like, you know, I didn't sleep well last night, so I should probably not today. And, oh, then we've got that big project meeting, and oh, and then grandma's coming to visit, so I'm just gonna wait till 2016. <laughs> One second. And that experience actually drives a lot of my decision making, how I try to go out into this world. And the voice that I hear in my head, the voice that I want all of you to hear in your head is jump on two. Jump on two. Thank you very much. Thank you. Contact tomorrowkleinberg.com <laughs> for innovation programs and keynotes today. Let me get my shoes. <laughs>